Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew. I'm not modeling anymore for the two of you. Loveline. Line one. I am Dr. Drew. He is Adam Carolla, and he is evidently in car trouble. It's raining like hell outside here, and uh, I don't know. I, my prediction is he'll call in from a roadside somewhere and tell us where he is. Last time this happened, you weren't here, at Anderson. Last time this happened, he he had car trouble. Ended up jumping the uh, basically the the uh, wall of the freeway to get off the freeway. And got picked up by a couple of good fellas and brought over here. Do you remember that? No, don't remember. All right, but I'm here in event, and I always love this when Adam's absent. Uh, the guest tonight is going to be. Ricky Paul Golden, he, you know him uh, as Gary Dawson on Young and Restless. He also has some interesting web projects underway, and he'll be coming in a few minutes. And I have absolutely no doubt that Adam will be here any second. This is uh, not like him. It's not as though he's always a flag. No, 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 no. Unacceptable. Be that as it may, let's go to your calls. This is, let's see here, hold on. This is uh, Derek. Derek is 16. Hi, how's it going? Good, what's up? Um... My dad uh, is about 36, and he doesn't have any facial hair. He has very little facial uh-huh, hair, uh-huh. and uh, he can't f- grow a full beard. I was wondering, if that was a genetic thing, or what? You know, what's wrong? Well, I'm sure there's some genetic component to this, but uh, how much of that is genetic, I I don't know. Uh, I I know that, for instance, I have no arm hair, uh-huh. and one of my sons has lots of arm hair. So does that mean that uh, you know, where did that come from? I don't know. Yeah, I honestly don't know. See, because he's never uh, met his real dad before. The dad left. Your dad has never met his real dad. Before. Yeah. Well, obviously, we are the component parts of our genetic histories, and uh, there's obviously a precedent there for you as well. And it's possible that this will be reflected in your body. I just spilled a, a coffee all over a computer. Can you guys get me a paper towel here or something? This is nuts. I'm trying to monitor the chat rooms at drdrew.com uh, while I broadcast here, and instead I just poured coffee all over a nice, nice uh, laptop. But can't predict. We'll see. We'll see. You will know fairly, fairly soon whether or not uh, you're going to have facial hair. Jessica's 22. Jessica? Yeah. Um, my period just started today, but um, uh, let me think. My breasts got really swollen, like, from, I'd say, like, seven days after my last period, so, like, for the past two and a half weeks. And then I, like, it's been getting worse over the past couple of years. That you get more swelling with the... Well, my PMS has been changing, and it's just, I guess it's actually over the past year that it's just been my breasts get really swollen and really sore and tender. Well, do you have cysts? What? Do you have cysts? No. You sure? Yeah, well, I mean, I get my annual, and I do my exams. And they've never said, gee, you have breast cysts? No. No? No. Well, this may just be, have you gained weight? Not too much. (laughs) Are Are you on any medication? No. You drink a lot of uh, coffee or eat a lot of chocolate, that kind of thing? Uh, no, actually, I just quit drinking coffee, mm-hmm. and I have quit drink, uh, quit dairy products for the most part. I try to. I eat eggs from time to time, but... I, I know of no evidence that stopping dairy has anything to do with this kind of thing, right? Yeah, that's more just because I'm, I'm lactose intolerant, and I have a pretty... And my stomach actually also gets really bad, like the first day of my period. All right, so and part of your... As you get older, sometimes your estrogen levels change. You get more estrogen, less estrogen, more progesterone, and that can change how you experience your menstrual tension or your menstrual period, your menstrual flow. So no big surprise here. This is uh, Sam, who is uh, 20. Sam. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask this question to Adam Carolla, but since he's not home. Uh... He's not home. He'll be here in a minute. I guarantee it. Okay. Well, I had a that, he, would, he would have called long ago if he were really going to be late. Oh, okay. Calculus. Yeah, it is. Oh, my question was, okay, I have a roommate. And he has a girlfriend, and she's constantly over all the time. And, you know, she's not really the roommate. She doesn't live in the house, and it's really hard for me to bring up the the subject that, you know, she doesn't live here, and it's time for her to kind of, you know, step away from our house. How? You mean she does she does she live there? Um, it's well, she has a place of her own, but she's constantly here at least five times a week. Does she spend the night? Yeah, she does. At least five times a week. How many guys living together? Uh, there's three of us guys. And, and then is, is everybody as disturbed about it as you are? Well, actually, no. I am, but our other roommate's never home, so he doesn't real f- he doesn't really feel anything. Do you think he would be bothered by it if he were home? Uh, I'll, I believe so. Yeah, I have talked to him about it. Hey, you live in a real small place where having another person around is a big deal. Well, it's an apartment. But it's not really, really small. Can you talk to your roommate about this? Uh, I tried, yeah, but it's kind of getting on bad terms. What does he say? It's, 
he asked me uh, what my exact problem is. I, I agree with him. What is the exact problem? My exact problem is that she doesn't live here, and I don't want to call her a roommate. You know, I want to call her as a friend. Are you pissed that he has a girlfriend you don't? No, no, that's totally not it. So, I'm yeah. kind of based it on the person here. Like, it doesn't matter who it is. It's just that a person's here, and they're, they're taking up energy. They're taking showers here. They're taking up room. You know, they're going through the so fridge. So what, what if he paid more? Uh, that would be fine, yeah, but see, I didn't agree to the terms of having four people living here. Well, one of them's not there. Yeah, well, he comes home a couple times here and there. Well, you're going to have to sort this out. The three of you are going to sit down and sort this out. Okay. Okay, because you're, you're one of three votes. I have a feeling the other guy's not going to support you on this. Neither of them probably will. Yeah. I mean, your roommate, your guys, you're young. People are going to have girlfriends over. It's part, part of the drill. Okay. And if it bothers you that they're taking a disproportionate amount of the resources, that's understandable. Maybe you should pay more. Yeah. But to I, say you can't live your life, I don't know. I don't know. Unless the other guy supports you on it. In which case, okay. all right, which case you'll But it, it sometimes seems that, you know, she's here by herself and when nobody's home. So she's making it her home. That's what sometimes it seems like. That, that's what's happening. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. She's making it her home. She, li- she basically, she's there five nights a week. Okay. She lives there, right? Right? What? Do, who lives there? She lives there. Yeah. She, she lives there more than your other roommate, and she lives there almost as much as you do. Five nights a week. Robert, 29. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Adam's not here yet. He'll be here in a second. Huh? Adam's not here yet. He'll be here any minute, no doubt. Okay. So you want me to wait for him? Or? No, I'd like you to ask your question. Okay. Well, my question is this. is um, You know, I know that they have, like, um, surgeries to increase the size of a man's penis. Do they have any that decreases the size? No. Why? Well, I was wanting to know if they did, and if so, is it a safe procedure and uh, whatnot? Why, why do you want to do that? I am a big boy. Well, um, I don't know. I've got kind of a... <laughs> I can't really find any girls that want to want to do anything with me because they all, you know, they, um, you know, they chicken out, basically, is basically what happens. And uh, then I get told, like, people telling me I've got, like, things going around, you know, people talking about, and I don't know, you know, I just wanted, you know, I haven't had any luck. I'm 29, uh... Robert, what the hell are you talking about? Well, you know, about finding girls is no problem, but then when it comes to having sex, they're all afraid to have sex with me. Why? <laughs> How come? Well, they say it's too big, and they don't even want to try. What are we talking about here? Uh, as far as penis. So, as, what kind of size are we talking about? Well, I've, I've gotten a nickname, Beer Can, because they say it's as round as a beer can. And, uh, you know, just, I mean, I guess, you know, pretty large. I get some pretty... Uh, strange looks in the gym when I go to get a shower. Stuff are you like are you going to give us dimensions or not? Um, as far as length or both. Um. <laughs> well, I guess um, as far as erect measurements or yeah. Um, seventeen. Seventeen what? Inches erect. Seventeen inches what? Uh, length. That's a damn lie, and you know it. Robert, come on. Uh, I'm serious. I mean, that's uh, that's what I've measured it at. And that's going from the top, not from the bottom. 17, a- Anderson, get, get your ruler. 17 is, is, we're talking about... That'd be a Guinness Book world record. Yeah. You, I've never actually, you know, did the uh, the girth thing, but uh, I'm interested in seriously getting uh, some type of a, uh, you know, I'm like... All right, you're going to have to hold on here, because Adam's the carpenter. He understands measurements better than I do. Anyway. Do you, do you, how, how do you keep? How, how do you wear clothing? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, well, I always wear, I wear baggy pants on everything. You know, I always wear oversized clothes. All right, hold on. Okay, we hold on, please. Sure. All right. Hmm. Diane, 22. Uh, I was just um wondering how likely it is for a two and a half year old to make up stories of abuse at all. If uh, at all. Depends what we're talking about. I mean, two-year-old, two, two-year-olds wouldn't really know anything about sexuality. Well, that's what I'm saying. So I if somebody know, touched her in I've, a sexual, I've taken her, I took her to the doctor today to have her examined, and um, she said the doctor said it didn't look like anything was wrong okay. by looking, by examining pretty closely, and um, she just told me the other day that somebody was touching her where they shouldn't have been. So in what way? Um. She told me that somebody touched her pee-pee, yeah. is her words exactly. But did you, did you ask her specifically what they did? Oh, yeah. And what did she say? She said they used 
it was on the bed and they used their hands. And she even told me, you know, who did it. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's hard to know what, what to make of all that. Certainly I would be extremely vigilant. Is, is this person, this perpetrator have a history of anything weird before? No. Nothing? Nope. Hmm. I, you know, you've you got to assess the situation. If it's really not likely to have occurred, if it's somebody that has no antecedent history and the, the, the child is speaking sort of vague. I mean, children, if you give them an opportunity to sort of fantasize about the kinds of things that go on with peepees and touching, and they, they, they'll, they'll come up with something. Mm -hmm. But it's, if it's not directed, and it, it, it's, I, I don't know that you have to be concerned. Okay, you just have to be, be alert, be careful. Okay. I mean, you sound awfully disturbed about this in general. Has anything ever happened to you? No, uh-uh, not at all. Nothing, okay. Nope. And she's I'm otherwise just, I, I'm just trying to look out for her best That's interest. Good. That's good. These are people that, you know, that it, it's a, a person that I, you know, have trusted with her for basically her whole life. And Well, maybe I wouldn't keep that person around her anymore, and, uh, or else, you know, if, if the, when she is around him, be very, very careful and really well, watch see, that's him. that's the thing, is that when, she, when she's around him, I'm not around. It's when I'm at work. Well, maybe it's time not to have that person around for a while. Okay. I mean, maybe she's referring to when she was having a diaper change or something. Who knows? Well, she doesn't wear diapers. No. I know, but maybe she's having a memory of something that went on long ago. You mm -hmm. understand? You don't know. You just don't know. It's not, it's not specific at this point. You have to be careful. God knows this day and age, you have to be careful. Okay. All right? All right. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, this is, uh, let's see here. This is uh, Frank, 17. Frank. Yeah, hi. I'm, I'm calling for Merced, and I'm having a problem, you know. Mm -hmm. I kind of got two girlfriends now, and... One of them is like a relationship, and I, I think I love her. I don't know. And the other one is just, she's beautiful, and I just, whenever we're together, you know, stuff happens, you know. And I was just calling to see, wh what, what do you think I should do, you know? When was your birthday? What year were born? July 26, 1984. Hmm. You're supposed to be how old? Well, I'm about to turn 17, but... I said I was 17 anyway, you know. All right, so you're 16. You may be a little younger than 16? No. All right. So I don't, I'm not trying to understand what the question is. Who should you stay with? Yeah, I, I don't understand, you know. It's, it's pretty hard. It's kind of confusing, you know. I'm kind of in love with one, and the other one's just like, whenever we're together, you know, we make out, had sex a couple times, but I don't know which one I should stay with. Well, I don't think you should stay with either of them, really. Why? Because you're, you're not ready to be in a relationship. You're screwing around with one. You say you're in love with the other, but you don't know. I mean, you're not ready for a relationship. Yeah, but it just feels right, you know. Like well, it's not. Her. It's not right for her though, is it, to treat her like that? Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of messed up. Yeah, it, it is messed up. And I, and I don't. I, I'm sure the relationship is good and feels good, but you really aren't ready for that right yet. And that's okay. But uh, don't. I don't think you should declare love at 16, especially when you're behaving like you are. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I guess you're right. All right. Good I luck. Thanks a lot. Magic. This is uh, Jeff, 25. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey, Jeff. Um, I'm calling because sometimes when I think of negative experiences or things that happened in the past that embarrass me, mm -hmm. I find myself cursing myself, saying really derogatory things about myself directed at my own being. Like you know, what? Know. Give me an example. Give me an example. Well, like this morning, like when I was in my when I was in my room, I was just listening to music and stuff, and I was just thinking about like certain girlfriends, like certain women that I've been attracted to that rejected me, mm -hmm. and it just pops out of random, and, uh... The thoughts do, or the words do? Excuse me? The thoughts do, or the, or the, the verbalizations come out at random? Uh, the thoughts come out at random. All right. And then verbalizations come from that. Like, I'll say, F you, Jeff. I'll say that to myself in a real, um, aggressive way. What's going on in your life? How are you supporting yourself? Excuse me? How are you supporting yourself? Um, I don't have a job right now. How come? I'm unemployed. How come? another thing. Yeah. Jeff, really, in general, you've got such high levels of shame and low self-worth. You need to get your ass together. You know, you really need to start working on Jeff. Don't, don't, don't focus on the shame and guilt about things gone wrong in the past. Start getting it together now. Start focusing on your life. Men, and women too, but women really need a sense of themselves in the workforce in order to derive any sense of worth. That's the one, the one thing you have after you get out of college. Why do you see kids feel so crappy in high school and college is, they have no, men, the young males have no way to define themselves until they get out into the workforce, until they really establish who they are. If you don't go ahead and do that, hey, it's no surprise you feel crappy. This is Adam with 17. By the way, I'm in the chat rooms at drdrew.com. I'm monitoring them, and uh, people are distributed throughout the chats, and I'm going to get into some of them and look around for questions that people aren't getting through on the phone lines that can get into those chat rooms. Right hey. now, I'm, I'm in the college chat room. Yeah, right. Adam. Right. 
And and when Adam gets here, Gunnels, I'll probably have to drop off because any any distractions in the room when Adam is here, he he can't uh-huh. tolerate it. He can't stay. If, if Adam, if if uh, if Anderson sort of raises his eyebrow, he, he's done for about a half an hour. Yeah. So Unacceptable. If I, so if I'm in a chat just watching you guys and asking, seeing if there's any questions that come up, that, that's that's too much. The room just uh, is overwhelming to him. Then okay. Adam, you are, what's going on? Well, um, uh, two weeks ago tomorrow, I got it. Like two weeks ago, I got admitted to the uh, ER. Yeah. Because I was like almost dead, and I had a temperature of 105. From what? Uh. No, they didn't know, and they they did a spinal tap on me. I had rash all over my body. Wow! And where do you uh, live? It was. Where do you live? I live in Portland, Oregon. Portland. And we, uh, had, a, we had an outbreak of murine typhus down here recently, which is a rash and high fever. Uh, well, after I mean, they they did a, a monospot test on me, mm-hmm. and that's what I had. It was like the worst case they ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have a real bad sore throat and all too. It was so swollen. I hadn't I hadn't drank anything or anything in three days. The other thing that lo- looks like that is septic scarlet fever. Scarlet oh. fever is still around, especially actually. There's some. It's a subtype of strep that causes that, and really high fevers, funny rash, bad sore throat. But it sounds like you had mono since you're yeah, testing positive. And now I don't. I, like my spleen's all huge now. That's mono. That's yeah. mono. Yeah. And I don't know when I can like. St- I mean, when can I start drinking again? Oof. Uh, end of summer. You're 17 anyway. What the hell am I telling you to drink for? Huh? You're 17. Well, I just like drink, you know a couple of beers or whatever. All right, Adam. Uh, liver and spleen ir- inflammation is a big part of mono, and uh, honestly, you should give yourself at least four months. Okay. At least. What about like activities? Well, you're going to lose a bunch of weight and feel real weak for a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, and what about like uh, like making out and stuff with girls and right. stuff? Once the fever is gone and you feel like getting up and going around again and you're starting to eat normally, you I doubt you'll be infectious at that point. Okay. Okay. There is such a thing as chronic mono where there's a persistent fatigue syndrome that follows this, but that is relatively rare. The phone number here at Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. Our guest is Ricky Paul Golden, who will be here. You know him from Young and the Restless. He is Gary Dawson. He'll be in just a second. Priscilla Lee Taylor was going to join him, but flaked out on us, and uh, we'll find out why. He also has a website called flyntv.net. We'll hear about that. In the meantime, it's Dr. Drew here waiting for Adam, who... Did he call us, you guys? Danielle? No? I, hmm. Because he, he I'm, I'm actually getting kind of worried about it because he usually checks in. Aren't you guys worried? You're not worried. <laughs> Nobody here is worried about you, Adam, if you're listening. Uh, they are not the least bit concerned, but I, I'm kind of worried because uh, it's raining outside and uh, this ain't like you. So we'll see what goes. This is uh, Robert, 29. Oh, Robert, we, I've got you on hold until Adam gets here, okay? Yeah, no problem. You haven't rethought your length at all. It's still 17 inches, right? Well, uh, yeah, I'll tell you... Um, you know, I used to. I've I've actually got invited to do um, pornography. Um, somebody that had actually, um, when I was in a gym in California, when I was traveling over there, supposedly was into it. And uh, you know, and I don't really want to do that. But I mean, I was also going to ask you about that. I mean, to what? I mean, how safe is that? Because I know they do a lot of testing on those people and stuff like that. How do you get a condom to fit? <laughs> That's a good question. Have you ever put one on? Uh, well, give me a rule. They don't really Seriously. fit. I mean, you know, they can. I can squeeze them over the top, and but you know they won't go all the way down. Of course, it's not even halfway down, right? No. Do you have any problem with sensitivity or feeling? No. It feels normal, as far as you know. I mean, with a condom? Or? The, the, no, I mean your your penis function. You you can feel things normally. Uh yeah. Um, it functions well. Everything works right. Uh yeah, actually, um, you know, actually, um, <laughs> well, I usually have to, you know, do quite a bit of my, but I mean, I, I actually, that's another thing. I mean, um. I think the amount of that I come is like abnormal too. I mean, I mean it's large amounts. Very large, yeah. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. Interesting. How how large a person are you? Uh, six four two, uh, probably two forty. All right. All right. Hold on. Okay. Uh huh. All right. See, Adam. Look what you're missing. Get get your ass down here. It's Brad, fifteen. Brad. Yeah. What's up? Uh. Yeah, I was wondering if it's dangerous to smoke pot while I'm on my med. What medicine are you on? Uh, Depakote and Zoloft. Depakote and Zoloft? Yeah. Well, it's certainly, it's not specifically dangerous that I know of, but it certainly isn't going to help the effect of those drugs. And if you're smoking pot every day and not telling the doctors who are prescribing this medication, then you have a big problem. All right. Have you talked to the doctors about your pot use? Um, I really don't smoke pot that much. Yeah. It's just that, like, when I do, I get, I get like, really paranoid. Yeah, I, I, no surprise. Why do you do it then? I don't know. I really don't that much. I, I like drinking better, and I was wondering if that's dangerous, too. 
Well, Depakote's a little tough on the liver, and you add alcohol to that. Yeah, it's, it's not 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 a great combination. This is uh, Nick 15. Nick. Hey, Nick. Oh, Nick is not. They put him on hold yet. Well, Nick uh, is 15, and Nick got here. He is. Nick. Hey, Nick. Yeah. What's the question? Um, for my age, I've seen a quite a bit of like strange and sort of screwed up pornography. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering if you knew how it would sort of affect me in the long run. I'll tell you what. Uh, we will take your question after the break. Is Loveline, Dr. Drew here. I am also monitoring the chat rooms at drdrew.com. Uh, I'm moving out of the college chat room because a bunch of yahoos are in there uh, repeating things. And really, it screws things up for everybody when people they start yelling stuff in chat rooms. Uh, we'll take Nick's question after the break. Ricky... Paul Golden will be here after the break, and hopefully Adam will be here as well. The fax number, 310-854-4455. Phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. It is Loveline. It will be right back. Loveline. 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 We'll be right back. Get in here, you old yak shelter. Yes, it is a love line. I'm Adam Carolla. He's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Those are my boys, Corn. I was just uh, hanging with them. In uh, Anaheim, they sold out the pond. Wow. Wow, they got uh, quite a show going over there. Yeah. You were one of the newest members? Uh, well, we did a little man show bit with them. I apologize to all the listeners uh, for being late, but... Uh, we had to do a thing during the halftime of their concert where we went under the stage and got up on the Jumbotron, and it was a madhouse over there. But uh, anyway, Korn uh, rocked. They uh, sounded great. The stage uh, show was great. Pyrotechnics, the whole uh, nine yards, and it's uh, really nice to see uh, friends of the show doing as well. They, they sold out two nights at the pond. It's wow. like uh, 15,000, 18,000 people over there. All right, so uh, anyway, I drove uh, 125 miles an hour over here. I left the pond at like uh, 10 to 10, and uh, here I is. Ricky Paul Golden is our uh, guest tonight. He's from the uh, Young and the Restless. It's the number one uh, rated daytime drama. It's been on for, well, actually it was on uh, three years before the TV was invented. <laughs> I don't know how they pulled that off, but it was very smart. Radio. They got the TV. <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> They created the show and actually had sold it at Nappy before TVs had actually been invented in uh, 1934, whenever the hell they were. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Ricky. Hey. How are you hi, doing? I'm great, man. I'm really glad to be with you guys. I have, uh, I have often said that, uh, hey, and, and don't take this the wrong way because I'm going to save myself on this one. People look at it daytime soap opera acting is sort of the lower rung of the acting mm -hmm. echelon to uh -huh. me it's the most difficult because yeah. um you get a big fat script every day and you got to take it home and memorize it right you get a big fat s script and you get a you get a big fat check and the only thing is that i, I mean i'm not trying to be coy about it thank the the thing is that it's the only gig in this town or and in new york that you, that never stops i mean if you yeah. you know it's there it's a series that goes on and on and on and it's funny when you say it's the lowest r ring on the totem pole because there's a lot. There's like sometimes there's a soapy smell about you, you know. Yeah. As an as a soap well, it, it's not the lowest rung on the on the acting totem pole. I mean, you could do uh, Annie Get Your Gun at some community playhouse, or you can be Susan Lucci doing Annie Get Your Gun on Broadway. Right, but <laughs> that I don't want to talk about her rung. <laughs> The wrong I want to talk about is, I mean, on this sort of professional working on TV. I mean, I don't know where it goes uh, that, and then, you know, I don't know, uh, daytime talk and maybe sitcom, and then you uh, get into, day, you know, one-hour drama, and then you're into the movies. But I, I think you're, daytime did it to themselves, because they have, so you can have a model, you know, just seem like they're on autopilot, or you can have somebody that's very good, you know? It just seems like, uh, it just seems like the uh, engine room of acting. I mean, it's just, uh, it's as it's, it's much a job as acting could ever be. <laughs> yeah. well, well, what I mean is, is if you're, you're busy, do, if you're, you're, do, if you're, you're doing work. a movie and you're working three months out of the year and you're sitting in your trailer and you come out of your trailer and you shoot for an hour and mm. then you go back in your trailer and you sit around for four more hours and you have an assistant, mm. 
I mean, this is this is day in, day out. You don't have a long hiatuses, do you? You never have a. There are fifty-one weeks a year. You, right. You got to schedule your vacation in advance. I did. I did a soap in New York for five years. This is new to me again. I'm back on a soap. Out in you know, I went from the number eighth rated show to the number one. So I'm ha- and, and the young and the restless. I will say this: the writing is is superior. I really don't watch the shows. I don't watch daytime. I don't. I don't know much about it. I, I really come from a heavy theater background in New York. But uh, I'm, I mean, I'm happy. I'm just happy to have a gig out in L.A. instead of doing a great pilot, great writing, and it just dies. It doesn't right. go anywhere, you know. Yeah. Oh, you get on the Young and Restless. I mean, the series won't go away. They may kill you. <laughs> yeah, I might die. Or, oh, yeah. yeah. From yeah, and I might come back to life. But you know. <laughs> Good night. Oh man, I would die. I would die with that big stack to memorize, and hey, you oh. got to work like fourteen-hour days, right? Actually, no. I, oh, on my old Good. show, I did. I was stuck out in Brooklyn, and but they've canceled that show. Another world's dead, and, and I think as the world turns, moved out to Brooklyn, and God help them because that sucks living out in Brooklyn doing that show. <laughs> I mean, you're just across from a, a from a. A uh, Hasidic high school, and there's just nothing to look at. It's, just, awesome. it's terrible. You're saying those Hasidic chicks aren't hot? Well, the, the, you, don't, you can't decipher the boys from the girls, but that's a whole other. Yeah. And it's cold, and it's just miserable. But the young and the restless, I'm out of there. God, I can go to work. I'm, I'm done by 10 in the morning sometimes. Wow. I mean, it's sweet. It's a sweet gig. See, after that whole okay. diatribe, Adam, it yeah. turns out you're wrong. <laughs> after, he's high on coke by 1045 every morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just flying. Nick? Hi. You're 15. What's up? Nothing. Um, we heard about his uh, question before the break. He uh, saw some weird porn on the web, and it freaked him out. Yeah. How long ago did you see this weird porn? Like last week. Last week. Last weekend. Yeah, you're 15, though, right? Yeah. The cement should be dry in your psyche by now. That kind of stuff shouldn't affect you too much. What? Yeah, but this was wouldn't quite be your normal end-of-the-day porn. I understand that. That you should enjoy. What did you say? Share. What was it? It was um, poo eating. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I sort of accidentally stumbled upon it. Sure. Yeah, it could happen. And uh, what was it uh, from Europe or something? I don't know. It was just some website. Lick uh, my butt. Uh huh. And uh, you watched, and now what? You don't want to eat? You, you lost your appetite for poo? Yeah. I see. Yeah, that can be, that can be tough on a lad. All yeah. right. Well, get it out of your mind and move on with life. I don't know what your question is. Does, how is it going to affect me? Uh, it, 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 not necessarily. It, you know you, what you don't like. Are you anxious? Or are you having uh, trouble sleeping or panic or anything like that now? A, a little bit. All right. So you're having some sort of little post-traumatic stress reaction. <laughs> oh, well, listen, let's not turn this into Vietnam, for Christ's sake. The guy <laughs> saw some Canadian chick uh, eat a little uh, Duke burger. And now uh, we got to you know, check she him into a really hospital. She must have really loved him. She no. must have really <laughs> yeah, loved that's him. That's love. <laughs> No kidding. Hey, uh, Nick. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. Move on. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you, you see, here's the thing. I don't want to. I don't want to sympathize too much because I think it makes people think they have a real problem, and uh, now they should work on it. No, it, it's not the kind of trauma we're used to talking about here. It's just a little bit of a disturbing experience, it's like if you're in an earthquake or something. Well, the poop horn left a bad taste in his mouth. No, so to speak. It. Yes. And uh, Robert here, I saved for you. Oh, okay. Uh, reduce- yeah, I caught. Part of Robert. Yeah. Did you see the old? Uh, R- the, Robert the, the, has a seventeen-inch penis. Was it? Was that? Was this the guy? Yeah, I'm Robert. Mm-hmm. Now, how do we know it was seventeen inches? Well, I've actually, well, I've actually had not only myself, but uh, I've had several doctors girls who, who wouldn't have sex with me say, "I, I just want to see how long it is, or whatever." And right. But uh, they seem to, you know, kind of get where, into where like is the, how big it is, but then they don't want to do anything. Hold on. So. Drew, I know what 17 inches is. I don't need well, you actually, to point it out to me. You're looking like for a said, ruler uh, around here. That guy that, uh, the guy that I talked to out in California, I've actually gotten, since since he's introduced me to some people, I've gotten many offers to come out and do something like that. But, uh, I mean, how safe is, uh, I mean, you say, I was hearing you all say they do some type of DNA testing. Is that, I mean, is pornography safe? Oh, you you want to get into porn, but how functional is your penis? Oh, it's very functional. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's frightening. Because uh, a lot of guys, uh, once they get over the nine and a half, ten mark, it it, it it's more weight than the well, base take, can it hold. Takes a long, I mean, it <laughs> takes a while to get you know get it totally. I mean, I can be like a half half hard thing, and it's it's still very big. But I mean, to get that just rock hard thing, it takes a little while. But can you get that? Yeah, I can get it. Just you know, I have to get pretty excited though. But you know, normally it'll stay like about a, you know, like a um, three quarter. 
like yeah, like about a half hard type thing where it'll that you know until I you know if I get really excited by some girl or something like that, and then uh, but the thing is, I mean, you know, I've had them, you know, I've to, I've told them, you know, we talked about it and. And they'll say, well, I like guys that are big, and then, you know, the, you know, we'll get down to it, and they'll be like, hell no, I ain't going to do nothing with that, you know, and all this stuff. And, Milton, well, it's what, like Milton Berle. What are, you, uh, what are you doing now for a living? I'm an engineer. I see. And uh, is your penis graduated so you can actually use it as a tool? <laughs> it's not a bad yeah, I mean, plan. I've actually, uh, you know, uh, that guy was telling me uh, that he did a mil- movie with Ron Jeremy, who's 13 inches, and he said, I'll make Ron Jeremy look small. No, listen, Ron Jeremy is not 13 inches. Ron yeah. Jeremy is a nine and a, a half on a good day. Huh. Yes, it is not there. Let me uh, let me Where's show uh, Drew and our guests what thirteen. Can and I what ask that you just honestly? Is. I mean, you, are you actually thinking about going into porno movies? I thought about it because um, you know I've said these. I'm I'm just curious. I mean, you just are you really thinking about that? Well, I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, because I mean, I'm I'm kind of running out of choices here. I mean, I've I've. Uh, Where running, do you live? Running out of Where choices. You live? You're an engineer. Texas. What 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 state? Uh, Texas. Yeah, you'd have to move. Well, everything's big over there. You'll fit <laughs> right in. Uh, and by the way, uh, pornography, one rung up on uh, the acting level than uh, daytime television. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> Just you're one so step. much more respected. Well, you get paid and you get to get to bang away. Okay, this, between my <laughs> fingers, this is 13. This ain't 17. This is 13. This is not Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy's more uh, nine and a half, which is uh, right about here. But this, this is 13, that's and 17 you're... is here. I mean that. I love schlong. That's that is insane. seventeen. I finally found out what Look, happened to the rest a, of my penis. Put it penis. back away. And put well, supposedly that back. guy said there's only there's only like two guys in in porn bigger than me. So okay, who said that? Uh, that guy that's done a few movies. He's uh he's actually from Europe originally. I see. Can I ask you just a personal question? Do you are you killing women when you're when you're sleeping with them? I mean, are they able to handle it? Do you have a girlfriend that can handle it? I mean, I've I've had them I've had them get all the way down until we get undressed. You know she's she's ready, and then as soon as I start getting undressed, they 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 make up an excuse that they gotta go. Uh, you know, uh, I was I was hanging out with this other girlfriend, her friend, and she took off and said I gotta talk to my friend, and she ended up leaving. Her friend said that she was totally afraid. So and, you see where people would think it's fantastic or whatever. You're, do you ever have you do you have a complex about that? Well, I mean it's kind of kind of pisses me off, man. I mean I you know it's kind of sucks because. Um, I mean, it's cool, you know, being large and everything, but, I mean, not to that point where no girl wants to sleep with you. 17 is yeah. freakishly yeah, large. All yeah, right, so, uh, hey, Robert? Do they have any type of, uh, you know, like a safe procedure to take maybe four no, no. inches off? Or no. <laughs> no. <laughs> take, oh, wow. A little off the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, imagine uh, I'm going to lose five inches and get down to 12. <laughs> I lost five inches. I've had a hole in me. You know what I'm saying? I have a cra- vagina. Cra- You're cra- kidding me? They shorty. land the uh, lunar module on my belly. So they don't actually have a re- they have a procedure to make it bigger, but not well, not, not really. They really don't have one to make it bigger. Either. Hey Robert, how's the girth doing? Uh, well, like I said, that's that's the probably the more freakish part. You know, like the it's head. More freakish part. The the head of that is probably the size of the palm of my hand. You know. Oh, that is wonderful. All right, hey uh, Robert. Um. I'd like you to send some of your sperm over here so I can uh, use it in an experiment. Oh, he also basement. pretty. He, he, the plumbing is also gigantic. I'm sure. Yeah. All right. How, how tall are you? Health just to get out. Six, there has to be a big four. volume. Six one, right? Six yeah. four. Six four. Yeah. He's a All big right. boy. He's in proportion. <laughs> uh, hey, Robert. I yeah. don't know what to tell you. Uh, keep your engineering gig. What about the uh, What about the amount of of uh, Is there an abnormal amount of sperm? Like somebody comes like a ridiculous amount. Is that normal or is it? How the hell normal? do I know? I mean, does that have anything to do with the relationship to the size of the gonads? Presumably. No, no, well, no. But the the general plumbing system, I'm sure, is extra large, too. Michelle? Yeah? You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Okay. I um, never get in a hot tub with that Robert. Can you imagine going hot tubbing with him and a couple of chicks? (laughs) Um, I have a problem. Yeah. Um, I think my boyfriend is cheating on me, but I'm not sure. Like, I have his access code, and both of us go to two different colleges, and um, I called his access code once, and I heard another girl on there saying that he left his sweater at her house. Yeah. And it couldn't have been anything innocent? Um, well, he's cheated on me once before. Okay. Well, that's enough. Access code checking his phone messages, you mean? Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. That's a relationship well, built on a solid, yeah, that's solid foundation. Say. Obviously, don't trust each foundation other Foundation of trust, yeah. Yeah. Well, like the first time he cheated on me, I wasn't. I there was nothing 
before that, him and I were totally cool. And then after I found out he cheated on me, I that's when I started. Okay. Uh, how long have you been going out? Two and a half years. That's done. You met at 16, 17, right? Yeah. And yeah, 19, you're going to different colleges? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that that's kind of the way things are supposed so to go. So you guys don't think... I mean, what should I do? Should break up. I you, you, this, this you should re- break uh, up anyway. Yeah, this relationship was over a long time ago. You just didn't know it. Huh. It's sort of typical of people your age to let relationships cling to them much, much longer than you should. Is she going to hang up, though, and say, that I totally love this guy, right? You, t- you totally love this guy? Oh, wait a minute. I got rid of her. You did? I, like, gave up my virginity to him. And See, it's like, deep. It's deep. It's deep, but it's over. Yeah, and it's it, college that's, years. It's, right. It's, yeah. it, 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 your people cling to it. There are different colleges. It's just impossible to keep these things together through that kind of thing. And there's yeah. a psychological thing for women who lose a virginity to a guy. It's as, it's like, if I stay with this guy, I'm still a virgin, in a sense. Right, right. right. I mean, if you look Clean. at it that way, yeah, I, I lost my virginity to this guy. He has my virginity. <laughs> as if We still have it. Like he's keeping it in that's his a wallet. Unity. It's a he special, lends uh, it to me on the weekends. And uh, on holidays, I get it for three or four days sometimes. And he's got my virginity. I'm still with him. So now the next guy I'm with, now I turn to a slut all of a sudden because uh, I've been passed around and I'm, I've long since lost virginity. Yeah, don't virginity. think that. Don't ever think that. No. And you And I, I'm, with the, I'm with the guys. You've got to live your life. And it's, it, it's funny, though, that guys really have no bond with the person they lost their virginity to. No. I mean, they might like them, but they don't like them any more than someone the next person they banged around with. No, I got a couple of friends that just they, they used to they used to gloat on it, but they don't give it they don't give a damn. I mean, right. it doesn't mean that much to them. All right. We will uh take ourselves a little break when we come back. We'll speak to uh Sarah's 26. She went off the pill last month, but uh, still hasn't had a period. I don't want to talk to her. Who are we okay. going to talk to uh-huh. here, Drew? Discharge smoking pot. <laughs> had a lot of uh girlfriends in high school, but since graduation, he can't get a date. Wants to know why not. He's 20 years old. We'll speak to Wade after this. Love line one eight hundred love one nine one. Back in a minute. Well, it's worth hearing. the song he's got all kinds of new stuff now oh really yeah new right. intros and outros you leave for 20 minutes the whole, ch- the whole show changes around it's a love line i'm adam carolla he is dr drew phone number 1-800-l-o-v-e-191 fax number 310-854-4455 uh filter will be in here uh tomorrow night i think we've uh, had them in here fairly recently ricky paul golden is our guest tonight he's from the uh, young and the restless that is uh television Number one rated daytime uh, drama. You plugging anything else, uh, Ricky? My plugging oh, it. Website. What about that? Oh man, we're we're, we're working on this underground. Uh, it's like a TV network for the web. It's called FlyTV.net. Uh, it's uh, we're like we're we're like the MTV. What MTV was to television, even though I kind of feel like MTV's. You know, it's it's, come, it's now forever mtv but uh we're streaming video we're we're search engine for live content we're we're a neophyte but uh a week in the internet world is like you know, five years three years whatever bad analogy but you know what i'm saying we're we're, yeah. we're a search engine for other people's live content and we're creating our own our own television shows reality based and eventually we'll get to scripted shows and i think that the net is going to be competing with television that's going to really be a part of, i hope not you know what i mean i have no idea how to work it <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the, that's speaking, the problem. Speaking of the way, let me take a couple <laughs> questions off the web. Somebody asked, "Is Anderson Dion dangerous?" You want to talk to Wade? Or I not? do, but I want to answer this quick, real quick. The Anderson Dion is is potentially dangerous if you take a lot of it. It's the stuff that uh, Mark McGuire was maybe taking, and uh, it's a it's a male hormone, and it can maybe accelerate your blood pressure and accelerate hardening of the arteries and put people at risk for various things like heart disease and stroke. And then another question was, somebody got the whole packet of low overall when they were given emergency contraception, right? Which sometimes will happen. Their question is, can you reuse? The pills that are there if you have another accident later and yeah you can and there should be an expiration date on the packet for when how you long can. does that stuff last usually you need a year or so yeah yeah and then what and then you throw it out great 
I have a question. Can I ask you? Because I really did. I was asked this question the other day. How long condoms that are on the shelf in uh, in normal department, whatever you know, drugstores? How long are they good for? They're pretty long. Like I don't remember offhand, but I think it's near, uh, like a long time. Five years. But years. but they're like two weeks in your in your wallet. In your in your yeah. The, yeah. yeah. You can see the ring through the leather. Yeah. yeah. Shows uh, the ladies. You mean business, Wade? Hey, what's up? You're 20. What's going on? Um, not much. Um. I was just, I, like you said earlier, um, in high school, I had like tons of girlfriends. I like if I broke up with a girl like a week later, I'd be going out with another one. Mm-hmm. And now that I've graduated and moved back into the city, I can't get date one. Yeah, very sad. What sad you- to see a man's prime go in high school. I've seen it happen before. You actually I- like that though. Yeah, I do. Because you're just desserts finally. That's right. I, hey, I remember, <laughs> I remember guys who had their prime in junior high. Do you guys oh, know man. any of those guys? <laughs> I, mean, I knew one Do you of know those any guys. of those guys? I was a, a busboy. He was in my buddy was in his prime, and after that, the Trans Am, the busboy job, it was all over. The guys, I I knew guys that were like big wheels in the ninth grade. Got you know dated the eighth grade chicks, uh, Mister Popular and whatever. That's their fifteen. They minutes. got into high school. Something happened. Next thing you know, they're seventeen, and How? It, it ain't happening. And That's I like true. I in, in high school I had no problem asking girls out, and now I'm just for some reason I'm just like. Can't even. Hmm. Hey, Wade. Yeah. You can't use the S word on this show, you idiot. Sorry. Sorry. All right. What are you right. doing for a living now? Are you going to school or? Uh, well, no, I'm not, I haven't started college, and I'm, I don't really have enough money to afford it, so I'm saving up. But I'm a checker at a supermarket right now. All right. Yeah. That is a uh, that's a uh, poontang gig. You will have your day again, I suppose. I'd like to see a guy in a smock and a bow tie. <laughs> knows where to put the eggs. Like to wear one at my job, but they changed the uniform, uh, luckily. Yeah, what happened to the goddamn bow tie? Used to be oh. the gas station guys wore it, supermarket guys wore it. Everyone wore a bow tie. Now, no one with a bow tie except for old professors. Now, now you don't even wear a bow tie with a tuxedo. No. Right. When I started, like, three years ago, we had to wear, like, dress shirts and a, and a bow tie and dress slacks, and now it's just, like, uh, a button, a nice um, blue shirt and black uh, jeans. Yeah. I don't like this casual stuff that's come over America. Hmm. I want everyone who works at dressing uh, tails. I want them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about tails, but no, I really do. I want, I want them to look like suspense. conductors. I want them to wear top hats. All right. <laughs> well, are there any like opinions you can give me? Like, okay, here, here's here's what uh, I can give you. Uh, you. You had a run. The run is over, and now it's time to gear up for the second wave. And here's how you do that. You just focus on your work, right. focus on your college, focus on you, focus on, you know, working out, focus on whatever it is you want to do. And you start molding yourself into the kind of person that a woman wants to be with. Because in high school, it's all sort of, eh, it's about proximity. It's about, you know, per- perception. Yeah, it's about who's territory. on the football yeah. team. It's yeah. about your friends. But then once They're you click, get out in the yeah. real world, you got to set it all up yourself. It's the job you have. It's where you live. It's the car you drive. It's Absolutely. education. It's all that stuff. And you yeah, can it's build your own, that. your opinion of yourself. Absolutely. I couldn't And that, that, too. But it's hard to have that opinion of yourself. No, you got to build it up. you got to make who you are. Bagging yeah. groceries. Right. So you just keep going, re-gear, and you can do it. The, the beautiful thing about being a guy is you got plenty of time. I mean, you know, if you're 20 and it ain't happening, don't worry. You got another uh, 40 years. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You seriously can. All right. Something you want to tell us? Share I, with us? I, I, listen, I when I was uh, 20, swinging a hammer, not getting any chicks at all, driving a beat-up pickup truck with the cranks broken off the goddamn windows, and bar stools where the bench seat should have oh. been in it, in it p- p- pathetic. <laughs> living with eight guys in a one bedroom, you know, I, I, I looked in the mirror. I said, this ain't cutting yeah. it. I'm not going to get anything. So I started, uh, I figured, look, well, I'll do some comedy. Maybe I can meet some chicks. And uh, boom, in the blink of an eye, 12 years later, <laughs> I got on the radio. And now look at me. I'm masturbating still, every night. That's funny. Yeah. I had a bad run. I, I was putting rubber bands in lobsters' hands. I had no self-esteem. I had to Really? Get, yeah, absolutely. That was my job. Wow. So I had to get a gig as an actor. <laughs> how big were those lobsters? I can tell a lobster through the water how big he is to this day. <laughs> I swear That to sounds God. like a dangerous job, the guy who puts the oh, rubber bands at, over the look claws. At, I'm not lying. Look at these scars on my hands. I have scars from my lobster days. That's and not I got promoted that, to truck that, driver. Now, correct me from, that's not from the claws like grabbing you. That's from the tails flipping around and scraping you. All of you. it. Well, it's the claws grabbing you. The claws, yeah. too. Huh? The, the claws, the sharp one, because, the you know. Where were you working? At uh, Jordan's Lobster Farm on uh, in uh, in Long Island, wow. New York. 
<laughs> wow, you're farming yeah. lobster. Yeah. Now, good. how do they farm lobster? Well, they would. We they, they were like the holding tank. These big eighteen wheelers would come down at three in the morning. All they'd open the doors, and these the ice would pour everywhere. And us, like seven schmucks, would getting paid nothing. Would be lifting these big, and we'd put all the lobsters in the tanks and weigh them up and put the rubber bands in their hands. And these guys were middlemen, and they'd have hundreds of thousands of pounds of lobsters, and it was the worst wow. job in my life. Can they? colonize or farm lobsters or they have to go get them from the ocean i mean i know they do it with other fish no it takes too long because seven years for one pound for the wow. first one for the lobster oh really yeah that's a, that's why it's a lot it's called a chick you gotta eat it at one pound finally Minimum. i guess it knows something about uh shellfish <laughs> <laughs> yeah see Wow. It's going to come and, in handy. And what's like the biggest one you ever handled? Oh, like uh, 30 pounds. Oh, yeah. my wow, God. That 30. Huge. That's bigger than a person. <laughs> hey, hey, I swear <laughs> to Christ. Like you see, like, uh, I, I was at a restaurant the other day. The guy brought out a five or six pound huge. lobster. It's huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Uh, th 30 pounds. It's, uh, yeah, forget about massive. it. Massive. That, that, that'll like, crush Tokyo. Oh, like, my God. Yeah. All right. Listen, we got to take a break. Uh, we're going to dedicate the last hour to talk about lobster. <laughs> I got to know what a 30 pound lobster looks like. Remember that, how much it that, goes for? That, that, in Vegas, that, that, in Vegas yeah, there's yeah. that, that ad, Rose, the Rosewood, Rosewood Grill. Rosewood Grill, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guy in the tuxedo yeah. holding. But I swear to God, that thing must be 22. 22, yeah. All right. Hey, Drew, <laughs> we're finally starting to get on the same page with the lobster weight. I like that. We'll be back after this. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Love line. We're going to take a quick 10 second timeout. We'll be back with more of the show in just 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Ricky Paul Golden is our guest tonight. He's from The Young and the Restless. Hey. And uh, we were talking about lobsters when we left off. <laughs> I'm infinitely I'm fascinated with lobster. I what? think giant clams also, shall we? A any kind of uh, giant crustacean. Don't crustacean eat the clams. Don't too. eat the clams. I would never eat another clam. Thank I would never eat a clam again. Why? I just, uh, in the last six or seven years, the, we all know they're filters at the bottom of the, you know. Oh, yeah. But they're just disgusting. I have not, I mean, especially on the whole East Coast. Well, they're cooked. You mean oysters you would eat? No, I mean, well, I'd, oysters, is, uh, oyster shooters at uh, that Buffalo Club here in the in the West Coast, awesome. But the clams, there's always some kind of crap in it. Some, they always bite a piece. There's nothing worse than biting into a piece of sand. Yes. It's uh, one of those silver tinfoil part, foil part feelings. of the clam deal. All right, listen. I don't want to go the clam route. I'm just <laughs> still on the lobster. Thirty lobsters. pounds. How big was thirty pounds? Whoa! It's yeah, that was big. It was sad. It was very sad. Yeah, uh, it was the definitely. Wow, oh, three and a half feet and, long. And his arms were. I mean, his hand was like a football. Wow. Um, you know, well, and, and, it's very and, sad. It was sad to see it die. Where it's did a, you Where did you see the thirty pound lobster? Oh, at, at Jordan's lobster. Did they eat it? The well, they sold it. They sold. Can you it. eat one that big? Oh yeah, but you know the it's you know no the deal. The bigger they are, the more they they just suck. They yeah. just it's not the bit the the little ones, the good ones. Yeah, but uh, all right. So we were talking to a uh, Peter Luger or something in uh, Brooklyn or Queens had to have it. You know, we were we were talking about uh, how it takes a uh, lobster. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, uh, I can just see myself sitting in uh, the program director's office uh, tomorrow, having uh, the discussion about uh, why I dedicated the last forty-five <laughs> minutes of the show to lobster. It's talk. fascinating stuff we're talking about. Seven years to get to one pound, <laughs> and then one pound for each year, year after that. Yeah. After that, yeah. Oh man, it's pretty accurate. And yeah, pretty yeah. cool how they can grow their arms back and stuff too. Oh really? After battle? Oh yeah. yeah. The, it gets you see a big off. thirty pound lobster with one little hand on the, you know, on the side. Right, yeah. because it's growing back. And they're growing it back. Oh my God! All right, uh, That's a talent. Where the hell uh, are we, Drew? Turn that screen around this way, Six, would you? I'm sorry, Kathy. Yes. You're twenty nine. What's up? Um, I was taking Paxil and I started getting a discharge from my nipples. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if that was bad. Imagine if a lobster got you in the nipple. <laughs> Ooh. 
You can talk about pound pound lobster. Ouch. Uh, yeah, Drew, what about that? That is undoubtedly for the medication. The thing is, though, it's important to have your doctor check your thyroid levels and your prolactin levels because sometimes these medications will sort of bring out a pre-existing condition and things like prolactin secreting a tum- tumors in the pituitary gland. If, if your prolactin level is over 100, that to me is a sign that there's something more than just the medication stimulating that. What do you so take talk that, to your doctor about it. What do you take that Paxil for? Depression. Uh-huh. How's that going there, Kathy? Um... Well, actually, I just stopped taking it. Or social phobia or panic attacks? Yeah. Is that, is that what you really, had? Well, yeah, but the, it wasn't really working. Uh-huh. So what, anything happened to you? Anyone do anything weird to you? Well, I listen to your show all the time. What does that tell you? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, is you that you're, 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 you're traumatizing your Adam. Did your dad molest you? Yeah. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. Where is he now? Um, he retired to a southern coastal state, and I don't talk to him. <laughs> southern coastal. He retired from his his uh, career as a, a lobster as a farmer, abusing father. Right. He's yeah. uh, taking some time off. They're trying to get him out of retirement to come molest again, but uh, he's no, uh, actually, he's quite comfortable he's where he is. He's yeah. dying from alcoholism. Oh, good, good. Hope he dies tomorrow. Well, that's not far off. Good, good. I'm glad. All right, Kathy. I'm sorry for what he did to you. It Me doesn't too. <laughs> it doesn't mean uh, your life's over, though. No. You can get your medication, do your therapy, and you know, get on with things. Okay. Thanks. I know it doesn't uh, doesn't sound like you're going to do that, but Kathy, seriously, are you working? Um, I just got fired like a month ago. <laughs> well, yeah. From what? From what job? Um, well, I was laid off from my regular job. I work um, for a car company, mm-hmm. and um, so when I got laid off, I was working at a sandwich shop, right. and then um, I got into an argument with one of the other girls there, yeah. and um, we were both asked to leave. Huh. All right. Are you living at home? No, I live with my boyfriend. All right. Is he treating you okay? Yeah, he's a sweetheart. You sure? I don't trust him. Yeah. Don't worry about him. What's he do? Construction? No, he makes prototype brakes. Oh, he's automotive, huh? Yeah. Yeah. E. He's working around a lathe, right? Metal. Um, probably. Yeah, I don't trust him. I don't trust guys who work around metal. <laughs> At least this guy's in the uh, research and development aspect of it. All right, Kathy, get your medication, do your therapy, read your books, take some walks. Life will be over before you know it. Oh, God. Oh, great. Well, <laughs> I don't know. You go to heaven. The streets are paved with gold up there. You hear me? Lobsters okay. come with rubber bands put on their paws. <laughs> more religious. Uh, yeah, they do. They, you know, there's nobody who has to put them on. They put them on in hell, and then they ship them up. <laughs> We're on hell. We're in hell. Right, at, right down here with the lobsters. Wouldn't it be great if what you guys say, if you just touched a person and you talked to them like that, and they could just... just no, it wasn't them. It wasn't their fault. You know, it wasn't them, and they could just move Make on. A difference, It'd yeah. be so fabulous if they didn't have to struggle for 20 years through it and therapy uh-huh. and Paxil and, and just know, hey, that was his problem, you know? The brain doesn't wire that way, unfortunately. I just wish it, it would doesn't. be so great. I know. If you could just intellectualize the whole process and go, uh, I happen to be born into this family yeah. with this son of a bitch who drank yeah. this booze and he did this and that and to God me. God help him and God, you know, so let him go off and that's it. You it wasn't there's, me. There's a book that was just reviewed in the New York Review of Books this week and called a general, uh, tor- I think Tours or just a general theory on love. And it talks about attachments and how it screws with your wiring and how long it takes to unwire mm. stuff to make healthy attachments. It seems just so unfair to have to spend book. your whole life on, on planet Earth trying to unwire the, the screw-up of, yeah, your, of your childhood. It is the nature of the beast, the human. But, I, I'm, it, it's, like, but it is, it's like a car wreck. It takes you know, uh, 3.2 seconds to yeah. do enough damage for you to rebuild this thing in your garage for another 10 years. Yeah. I mean, it's like any it's any crazy. tragedy, plane yeah. crash, ca- car crash, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You do the damage takes place in in a millisecond. The repair stuff. part, you know, earthquake, whatever whatever analogy you want to oh, use, yeah. the repair takes uh, years, mm-hmm. and that's or sometimes you just have to move. Sometimes you got to just uh, you know tag it and move across the street. Seth, I don't know what the hell that <laughs> means. I guess it's reincarnation. Southern coastal. Seth, you're 29. Oh hi. Hey, what's up? Um. 
I excess, uh, excessively masturbate and have since I'm 13. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have to define what that is around Adam. Yeah. It means like at least every day, and sometimes. Well, hold on, you're offending him. You're f- wait, wait, Adam, hey, just at outraged. least every day, excessive. Hey, How old are you? Me, I'm 29. 29. Yeah. I feel real guilty about it, you know. I mean, cause well, what are you good for a week? Um, well, like how many times do I do it a week? Is no. How much we donate to the show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you idiot. Yeah. Well, I like maybe 14 <laughs> or more. All right, so it's not at least once a day. Once it's a day. it's uh, two, maybe three times a day, right? Well, some days it's just once, but other days it's like three or four times. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and I have a hard time like staying monogamous in relationships. And it's like I'm not in a relationship now, you know. But even like when I'm in a relationship, you know, um, it's like I, I could be having sex regularly with my girlfriend and stuff, and my, my mind tends to always be oriented around sex and stuff. But you know. I could just have sex with her. I'd go in the bathroom and I'd start jerking off again, you know? Yeah, yeah, so okay. you're, you're a little compulsive. Yeah. Well, a little yeah. distance. Little, that's a little disconnect going on there. I mean, right. is this like completely unhealthy or what? Uh, yeah, it, it makes it, me feel so guilty and stuff, you know? Yeah, the, the unhealthy part is the disconnect part, the part that doesn't allow you to take all that and put it into your relationship. You ever okay. find a girl that, that, would, uh, that you could share all that with, or have you never even tried that? Yeah, I mean... I had I had one girl from before who like you know I mean she was just <laughs> probably just as sexually active as me I mean we we would literally do it a few times a day but even then you know I mean I cheated on her and stuff and I'd still be masturbating when she wasn't around and stuff you All know right. but, I mean, did, you, did you did something happen to you growing up did you did you answer that question um, no I mean never any history of sexual abuse or anything I mean my my, my parents were into like uh, drugs and alcohol and stuff you know I've even had problems with uh, Drugs myself, you know. All right, so you may but be a I'm sex. Like completely. Shut up. You may be a sex addict. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, you should go to. Uh, like. uh, what and, the hell is that? And by the way, having a, having a problem with drugs is not something that magically goes away. That will that will stay with you in some form. Once that biology has been activated, either you'll stay with drugs or you'll convert the it over to some thrill activity yeah, like addict. sex or extreme sports, that sort of thing. You got to go check out SA. He, he really should. I got to tell you, I was going for number two uh, last night. About one forty-five in the morning. I, uh, that I'm not proud night. about this, but at least I'm honest. I, I, I squeezed one off uh, last night about eight, eight fifteen or so. Yeah, you you know. actually announced it when you got in here last night. Oh, I did. Yeah. 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 Well, then I went home <laughs> and uh, I had a couple glasses of wine and uh, you know I had a little, some candles, a little buzz going, and I set you the didn't mood. Put on Enya, did you? It was like <laughs> Yanni, and it was <laughs> like uh, one forty-five, and I thought, all right, I'll go for number two. And I thought, well, should I pop in a movie or should I just kind of <laughs> go off memory? I mean, I'm a creative guy. Wow. Yeah, except for the memory is the last time I whacked off. <laughs> it's not you feeling you know, okay. So I got down there. I didn't know you actually did it without a movie. Yeah, I did. I uh, I was closing my eyes and I thought, I'm going to do a little fantasy thing because I had a little buzz going, you know. <laughs> I closed my eyes and I started, you know, I started going at myself. And and so I had a little dialogue going, and I had a, had a woman down there, and I was getting some oral sex, you know. Yeah, okay. And she was like, "Oh boy, do I love uh, doing this to you?" And I was like, "Yeah, oh, it's so good." And I was like, "Okay, I'm with this." And she goes, "Yeah, you're, you're, it's so big." And then I went, "Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, this is true." And I stopped, and I went. Okay, I got to start over because they, I mean that's, that's not believable. And now it's kind of funny, and I'm actually <laughs> laughing. And I shouldn't have had her say that. I thought to myself, and I thought, mental <laughs> note: don't don't have her say Rewind. that stuff. Yeah, I gotta try to kind of keep it real within the realm of possibilities here. <laughs> so I was like, all right, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna just start again. So I just started again, and I just deleted the, you know, I kept the I love uh, giving you the BJ, and uh, I love being with you. I spoke in sort of vague terms, but <laughs> what well, sweeping generality? <laughs> yeah, I, it was so bizarre that I stopped. True. Is that healthy that I stopped? <laughs> <laughs> keep it, like, keeping it almost real. Couldn't you just imagine the anatomy to be different? I, no, uh, no, no. That's too, it's too my penis. Yeah, right. it's not someone else's. Yeah, yeah, I had to reset my balls. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. It was it was so sad. I started laughing like I'm, but you know, tears coming out down too. Sarah. Yes. You're 26. What's up? Um, I went off birth control last month, and I hadn't got my new period, so I was wondering if that was normal or Your not. New period. Okay, my <laughs> it's brand new. Yeah, my brand new one. <laughs> yeah. Non birth control pill one. It's improved. It has that new period smell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long did you st- when exactly did you stop the pill? 
Um, last month. I should have got my period two weeks ago. Well, it's very common for people to have uh, some delay in the initiation of normal cycling. Pretty much everyone will have it back within six months. Okay. All right. All right. And if you don't, they can give you some progesterone challenge. It's not a big deal. Can she be pregnant? Mm, interesting point, but Sarah, that's, that's important actually. Go get, go get a pregnancy test. If there's any question, I'll always when you miss your period, that's always the number one, two, and three things to rule out. Oh, thank God we have a soap star here telling the doctor uh, yeah. his job. Drew, get with the program, would That's you? Right. Alan? Yeah? You're 16. What's up? Yeah, um, I got in a snowboarding accident over uh, prison's weekend, and um, I went to surgery, and uh, since I got the surgery on my arm, I haven't been able to get erection, and this was uh, like two weeks ago. So mm-hmm. Are, are you taking pain pills? Uh, I, Yeah, I got off of those about a week ago. What pain pills? Uh, Tylenol with coating. Anything else you're taking? Uh, no, that's it. Uh, it, things will turn back on again. Yeah. Okay. Especially after the settlement. It's a subway accident? No, snowboarding. Snowboarding. Oh, snowboarding. Snowboarding. I'm thinking New York. Yeah. He got hit by a train. <laughs> making millions of dollars. You okay? Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, and I just want to say, Adam, you're my hero. And uh, yeah, right. I love, love, I love uh, Loveline and... Um, man Show. The Man Show. Oh, oh God. God. God bless you. Yeah, you sound like a Man Show guy. Listen, I won't go snow, snowboarding because of this. Everyone... Everyone says, you got to go. It's great. Oh, right. we're going snowboarding. You got to go. And then everyone comes home in a broke sling. It. Oh, they yeah. broke both ankles. They cracked their pelvis. I mean, everyone's getting the ass kicked out of them snowboarding, yet they're begging you to go do it. And my thing is, is like, until everyone stops coming home in a body cast, yeah. uh, that's when I'll start Snowboard, doing it. Snowboarding, also the thing with the sail on the, on the surfboard. It's just impossible oh. for me. I cannot do these the, these activities. I can't. I mean, I, I, can't, I just suck. Yeah, I I'm assuming I suck. I just you don't want to. Yeah, I, I yeah I, I've skied a couple <laughs> I mean, of times. I'm from the valley. Oh, we don't right. we don't like no. have that stuff. Yeah. There's no snow. There's no, there's no like picture, recreational picture sports. Picture my dad or mom buying skis, boots, and bindings oh. and heading mm. up the mountain. Yeah, are you kidding me? So you suck. You suck. I, I suck too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, like I said, potentially, who knows? Maybe yeah. maybe I could have been world class, but uh, I'm not going to find out. And I'm too old. Cheryl, yes. you're 21. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I went to a bar about four weeks ago, and I met this guy, and I went home with him. I didn't sleep with him the first night, but about two, three days after that, I slept with him. And then um, we had a kind of a relationship for the next two, three weeks, and he broke it off with me because he said he's not ready for a relationship. Well, um, I just want to know why, and now he won't call me. And I want to know why he um, he won't call me or if I should call him back and he doesn't to want a he doesn't want a relationship. Um, should I call him back though and just try to establish a friendship with him? Call him back? Mm-hmm. He we, didn't we, we call just, you, did he? I'm sorry. He just didn't call you. Mean call after him. She means go after him. Yeah, like I pursue I just it. Form like Are a, you saying a pursue it or not? Some we, kind of relationship with him. We just had this discussion about men and friendships after a, a physical relationship during the break. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's not interested in going that direction. Well, I don't want I don't want to, him to be my boyfriend anymore. Even oh, friendship see. would be fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying. I this is just me. Uh, th- this is just my opinion. But I don't. I personally don't know what the what the point of keeping a relationship going with somebody after I've had a very physical and you know and, and sexual relationship with a girl and she's my girlfriend or you guys had a great thing for three weeks or three months or three years. I just don't. I I as a guy, I'm not. And I was just we was wasn't that kind of a little bit of the general consensus? No, men don't don't get unusual for them to have a relationship, a friendship after the like fact. a real pal. Yeah, let's let's have a little movie, and I'll see you later, and then start talking about your other relationships. It just never for me, it never worked out. I just don't ever. I don't really see. Now Cheryl, Cheryl point. doesn't want that. She's deluding herself. She wants him back. She wants oh. confirmation that it was only, all okay. Yeah, it's the only connection. So this is the only connection she can make. So Cheryl, you don't you don't want to be friends with him. You met the guy at a bar, didn't, you banged didn't him. Did you have a good time for, for three weeks, For too? a few didn't, weeks, and that was it. So didn't. just forget about it. It doesn't work like that for women, Ricky. Rick, I they, know, but they, they it wouldn't be, I wouldn't no. be great right, women, if, if the other breed could think that no, way. No, it's an abandonment. It's awful. Cheryl? Uh-huh? Uh, you're not going to get what you want out of this guy. Okay. But if you want to call, you can call him, but it ain't going to work out. Mm. I'm telling you. So the best way is just not to call him. Just forget it. Find a guy who wants a relationship. He is not experiencing what you are experiencing. You know what people do is they go, uh, especially women, but guys do this too. They go, okay, I want a relationship with this person. Okay, that's not going to happen. All right, well, can't we just date a little? Okay, that's not going to happen. Okay, well, we'll just be friends. Well, that's not going to happen. 
okay, I'm going to get drunk and come out of the house and get my goddamn comb yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> that does happen. I've done that a few times. <laughs> As a baseball mitt. As a baseball mitt. I want yeah. back. I leave a baseball mitt at every girl's house I date, so I have something to come get. <laughs> but the point is, is... Uh, catching or pitching you don't even (laughs) you don't even know where you're at i mean your mind is playing tricks on you you want to see this person you make excuses to see this person this whole thing of i really like the guy okay it's not going to happen can't we just be friends that that part that's just an excuse for you to try to get near that person again though for women that's a big piece of relationship you know what I mean? So it is satisfying something for me. I know, but that's that's when the woman dumps the guy after a four year relationship. That's yeah. not after yeah. a three year th- fling. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish that a off. woman would be able to. It's just I love girl. There are a few. There are a few girls that go. I just wanted it. I just wanted to have a good time myself as well. I just enjoyed it. I used him. He used me. Type of thing. I don't mean it like there's, that. There's, no, you, but I had a great time. When women do that, though, there's reasons. Mm. But that's fine because you're just fine, having sex. You don't have to get into. Of course, the you don't have to marry those those kinds of women. But. Sarah, hello. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Well, the other night when I was giving my boyfriend oral sex, I noticed a bump on his penis, and I was wondering if it was oral sex because it felt kind of rough, kind of like a scab. You wonder if it was what? A wart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wart, yeah. It, well, was it? Was it? Did it look like a wart? Um, I didn't see it. Well, you got to check it out. You just felt it. Yeah. Men can get right. little all kinds of funny little skin things, including dermatitis and all kinds of stuff. You yeah. were too embarrassed to say something to him? Yeah. How long have you been with him? Um, for about eight months now. Mm-hmm. And uh, where was the bump? It was, like, on the side. Uh-huh. It scared you? Halfway down? Huh? It was it, like, halfway? Was it in the middle? Yeah. Why uh-huh. is that? It was like in the well, that's interesting. I have uh, I placed a uh, speed bump on my penis because uh, I don't like uh, the uh, fast slow down, ladies. Fast oral sex. Slow down. Like that's they it. put in the middle of a long uh, side street. Although yeah, this sure. uh, this isn't long. I don't. I uh, <laughs> I like a slow rhythmic sort of thing, yeah. and I find the bump sort of uh, slows them down a little mm, bit. Okay. Reminder. Yeah, paint it yellow. Mm. Stripes. <laughs> Except if it's dark, <laughs> you're never going to see it. Jesse. Yeah. You're twenty. Yep. What's up? So, what she need to do? Just talk to her boyfriend about the the bump of the penis. It's inspected. And I have a question about Show the bump on the penis. Can, you can. Can you get mouth warts? Can you get? Yeah, uh, but un- real unlikely. And mm. chances are, it was a wart from when he was fourteen or fifteen years old. Can't they come back after a year and a half or two? Oh years yeah, but she needs that? to know that too because now she has warts when they have sex. And it's uh, mostly on the outside. Is that not true? Or I can go all the way inside the girl or the warts. Women, women occurs on the inside. No, it on the inside. So she wouldn't even see, see it. So she should check it out. Jesse? Yeah. You're 20. And it What's causes cervical cancer is the problem. Yeah. Uh, about a month ago, me and my girlfriend, we went through an abortion. And uh, just lately, she's been, uh, you know, everything I say, she's really, she snaps at me all the time. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm trying to do everything I can to understand what she's going through. And, you is know, she depressed? I, I feel guilty about it and everything. Is she and, depressed? What's that? Is she depressed? Oh, yeah. I, you know, yeah. she doesn't act like it, but. Uh, Irritability, by the way, is one of the more primary symptoms of depression. Oh, yeah? That's what I got. And just the hormonal changes that women go through terminating a pregnancy can can cause depression. The acknowledgement of a loss in in abortion frequently causes depression. Does she blame you? Well, we had a talk about it, and she says she does a little bit. Yeah? Did you convince her to do it? Well, see, I, I told her what I thought we should do. Right. And... Then I left the final decision up to her. Right. All right. So, and yeah. that's that's basically what we both decided. How long have you been together, if I can ask? Uh, three years. Okay. It's that magic right. three-year mark. Hey, Jesse, this is pretty normal stuff. I mean, it was only been a month. They got the hor- whole uh, hormonal thing. She feels guilty. Uh, she blames you. She feels like maybe you manipulated her. She probably blames herself more than she blames you, but she's taking it out on you. Right. Hey, you, you can't really expedite this thing. You just got to ride it out. So, I mean, is there anything I can do to... Yeah, be present, be nice, pretend like you're listening for a change. And be careful and be that's sure about it. that she doesn't get a, a major depressive episode. I mean, if she really is having trouble functioning or having substantial disturbances of mood, that needs to be evaluated. And and listen, guys, sometimes you just have to be a punching bag for a few weeks. Do you love this girl? You just want to stay with her? For, I mean, you looking at a long-term staying with her for not giving it up? Well, yeah, but see, that seems to be one of the problems is it seems like we're getting really close to breaking up over this. I mean, I don't want to, but she's telling me all, bringing out all kinds of bad things about the relationship and just saying that it's getting stale and everything like that. Yeah. Mm. All right. But, I mean, I, I don't think she would be saying this 
regularly. I think it has a lot to do with what happened a month ago. Yeah. All right. Nick, it's connected, but it probably isn't the only element. Mm-hmm. It's the period at the end of the sentence, I think, if I can say that. That uh, makes a certain degree of sense. All right. Hey, Jesse. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, pretend like you're listening. Uh, buy some flowers uh, just because. Vacation. Take a vacation with it. And, uh, yeah. Go. Uh, y- you know what you need to do? What's that? Make something yourself and give it to her. All right. Women love that crap. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it That's was painful. Uh, as long as it took time, as long as uh, you went out and picked something or stuck some elbow macaroni to the side of a can, as long as you did something. Just women like to that. see a you little effort. That afterwards. I, I, uh, I like that about women. Men, we're bottom line. Get us uh, some uh, floor mats for the car. Get us a new pair of shoes. Get us a basketball hoop or some Nintendo. That's it. That's, we want what we want. I don't care. No matter if where they got it from. Steal it. Hey. Crash can. Back. Hey, you know the neighbor kid who's retarded? Yep, broke into his room and stole it. Fantastic. (laughs) I'll use it every day. It was free. Even better. I'll enjoy it more knowing it was free. But women, no, you got to make it. It's got to hurt just a little bit. I like that. We've talked about it a million times. If you're a rich guy, uh, $5,000 diamond ring doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. If you think about it, why doesn't that five thousand dollar ring mean anything if you're rich? Mm. It didn't hurt. That's a that's a day's pay. Mm-hmm. That's not a month's yeah. salary. You didn't scrimp and save. It's got no, that's nothing. I have to tell you this that I had a, my ex I had my ex girlfriend, I was trying to make up with her. I went up into the hills of Cal- Hollywood and I picked flowers. I started this I was like on a day then I got vines and I wrapped them. I did the whole thing myself. I brought it home to her that night. Nothing. There was not a reaction. We were leaving the next day for somewhere. She just hung, oh, that's nice, and she hung it on the wall to dry. Never talked about it. It was then I knew the relationship that's was over, over. she was a cold bitch. Right. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. She was not like your normal woman. If, so I figured if she didn't have that kind of sensitivity, I didn't want to be around her. Yeah. Women want you to actually grow the flowers that you uh, give them. I should start some service where I just send uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Nicaraguan day laborers into the hillside to pick a bunch of crap and make it look like you made it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it did look that. like crap, actually. Yeah. Hey, they don't care. That's not the point. Should have been okay. Should have been enough. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be back after this. Oh, Yo, love line will be right back, homie. It's the Love Line. <clears throat> I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Ricky Paul Golden is our guest tonight from The Young and the Rest. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. Filter will be in here tomorrow night. And let's hop back on the phones and speak to Jennifer, who's 21. Jennifer? Yeah. Your husband cheated on you a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you don't want sex with him. Right. You're pissed at him. Yep. What, uh, how'd you catch him cheating? Um, he just started acting really funny, and then I just kind of confronted it, and he admitted to it. Oh, boy. Yeah. That, that's cause for divorce. Not, <laughs> not the cheating, the part that he broke that easily. <laughs> How was he acting? He was just really distant, and then we were driving home from work one night, and he was like, I think I want to separate, and I was like, what? Wow. And he was like, yeah, I think I want to separate, and I was like, dude, you're not telling me something. And then he told me. And so I, like, got real erratic and everything and ended up in a mental institution that night. Oh, and then boy. he slept with her again that night. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Love and guys. The night. And the following night. So three times in a row. How and he told you that, too. How did you find that out? Um, well, basically, I, I told him, I said, you know, I want to try to work things out. So you need to tell me everything. Uh-oh. And so I thought he told me everything. And then we were out to dinner one night trying to work things out and stuff. And then he's all, yeah, it didn't happen once. It happened three times. See, they never tell you everything. Guys, we never just never tell I you know. everything. And, I know. and he went on to tell you uh, the night you checked into the loony bin, he yes. went and banged her again? Yes. Okay, is she he Jennifer? Adorable, this girl. He, he wants cruel. to break yeah. up. <laughs> He's, He's telling you, to, yeah. hey, listen, I want out. 
And you're not letting I mean, him this out. Is, this is not just usual guy stuff. This is a, somebody being extremely aggressive. Hey, uh, Jennifer, <laughs> he'd like out of this relationship. How long have you been married? Um, April In April, it'll be three years. Mm, it's hey. that magic three-year mark. You're 21. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So young. Yeah, why'd yeah. you get married so young? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You don't sound that broke up about it, that broken up about um, it. Well, it was a year ago, and I just kind of want to move past it, but I just, I, I really just do not want to have sex with him. I mean, have like you slept with anybody day. else? No, be honest, no, be honest. Not. He's not listening. No, of course not. Yeah, of course not. No. This, this relationship is in limbo at, at best. And if you don't do something to bring it either back together or resolve this, it, it's not going to survive like this. Have you just shut down your sexual appetite altogether? If Pretty I mean? much, yeah. Yeah. It's yep. payback time. Well, she's pissed. Of course. She has a right to be. But on the other hand, uh, this guy sounds like he checked out a while ago. Yeah, but he's in for a year. This is a year ago this all went down. I yeah. know. But, you know, guys, they can just get busy and sort of check out and go on autopilot. Yeah. Has he checked out? What do you mean? I have the relationship. Is he, you know... No, I mean, he seems like he still really wants to try to work on things. And, and the thing that sucks is, like, it, he really tries, but I kind of treat him like crap. Like, yeah. you know, but he still puts that he's with me. He's a whipping boy like, now. What is motivating him? Why is he hanging in? I, I don't know. I have no idea why. Because if it, if the roles reversed, I probably would have been like, okay, it was a year ago. She's treating me like, or, you know, he's treating me like crap. I know I screwed up, you know, but it's over with, and we're trying to work things out. But well, let me, let me float a theory. What if Jennifer was lovey-dovey? How long do you think it'd take him before he started to stray again? Mm, you know what I mean? Sometimes theory, you get yeah. caught up in that drama yeah. of just yeah. trying to convince someone you're a certain and way when you don't even really care. Mm. Yeah, I see. I don't know, but I didn't even know he was like capable of doing this. It was such a shock. I had no idea I know. he would ever do anything like this. So I love it when women uh, discover a man is capable of sleeping with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> if I have a daughter, I'm going to explain. It's not even like sleeping with somebody else. So you could sleep with a hole in the wall to a guy. I'm right. It's my. It's I, I mean, do you think like marriage counseling or something would work? Yeah. I mean, I've yeah. been on like I've been on like medicine and stuff just because I've been really depressed lately. Yeah, but. but I I've been off of medicine for a couple months, thinking that it was possibly that. You don't have any kids, do you? No. Oh, Good. Please yeah. don't have any kids. <laughs> no, I'm not funny. No, definitely know. some couples work should be done here. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Okay. See if you can get him to do that. Will he do that? It probably, yeah. He's yeah. Doing, yeah. See if you can do that. Tell him uh, there'll be some sex for him at the uh, end of each session. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Jennifer. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's really cute. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's a bitch when uh, you do something that's kind of reprehensible or heinous. I mean, first you have the affair, fine, maybe you can forgive that. Then uh, the night she gets checked into the uh, padded hospital, you're back on top, your old chick. Uh, that kind of stuff, th th that woman will pay you back. Listen, you'll be uh, you'll be in your grave for five years. The yeah. payback will not have ended. Yeah, it's, like, it's like that's what hell is. She'll exhume back. your body just to uh, kick you in the nuts but and you then lower it, you back down. You again. hit it on the nose, though. He now that he's being treated like garbage. You know, he was the one that was driving in the car and said, "I want to break up." Right. Now that he's being treated like a dog, he doesn't know what to do with himself. Yeah. Yeah. He he may just be panicking and sort of having a knee jerk reaction. You know, sometimes you'll do that. You'll get in a relationship and someone you'll piss them off essentially because you want to break up. And then they get pissed off, and then you get so obsessed with trying to apologize to them that that just becomes your whole focus. You don't even know why you're doing it anymore. It's like <laughs> to be okay. It's like trying not to get fired from a job that you don't care about. Right. Okay. It's about shame. All right. Katie? Hi. You're 16. I'm 16. What's up? Um, my question is, I want to know what douching is, and how often should you do it? Um, douching is when you take a hose and you put it in your rectum. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you take, no. A, uh, take a bottle with a hose on the end and you put it in the vagina. Well, I was close. How and, far? What am I, a few inches off? And flush so out me. with whatever, fl whatever type of fluid you happen to have chosen to use for this. And, and uh, yeah. you know, do it no more than once a month. How is it, Katie, you're uh, 16, you've had a vagina nearly half your life. And you don't know what douching is. Mm, my mom's kind of like one of those old-fashioned type. Oh, things. listen. My mom locked herself in the room and smoked pot. I knew what douching was when I was 11. Well, I was calling my friends douchebag with regularity <laughs> by 12. I, I asked my friends, but they didn't know you. By the way, isn't there other parts of the douche you could name your friends? You know yeah. what I mean? Hey, douchebag. Douche nozzle. 
<laughs> douche nozzle. Come here. Yeah, you and douchebag. Come here. <laughs> and do bring douche hoes. We're getting a game going. Why don't you please popularize that term? Douche nozzle. You should coin it. <laughs> nice ring to it. It really does. Why were you looking into the douche thing? Hold Why? On. You it's hear not, so much thinking? about the bag. You're just not about the nozzle. <laughs> you really don't. I, I hold on. I, hold on, Katie. I've stumbled onto something. Why not call guys douche nozzle? It, it's even worse it's than got the a bag. Nice, nicer ring Hell, too. The, the bag's hanging on the back of the door, That's six funny. eight feet away it's from the those, woman. It's got those power letters Z. Hey, douche nozzle, <laughs> move your car. I don't know. What to try it out. Didn't they used to use hot water bottles as a douche sure. with a hose? Well, Did your they, mother have a hot an, water an, bottle? Anima bags, really. Yeah. Yeah, and in my bag. It looked like a too. hot water bottle, yeah, though, yeah, right? Yeah. What What does it do? What? It just rinses things out. Oh, for Christ's sake, Katie! It, did Did your mom lock you in the basement and? Uh, no, no, I'm just. What I happened just to you? Wanted to make sure. I mean, I kind of knew, but not completely. I just wanted to know for sure. Where are your friends? Don't get douche happy, though, right? Dr. Drew. Can't not you, good for you. You can break the vagina with too much douching. Can you not? It, 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 you can it, stop it. You can fracture it. That, yeah, yeah, no, it can It can be not good for it to do it too much. You can get infections. Yeah. You won't get lub- lubricated All anymore. All right, so uh, once a month, max, right? Yeah, um, Katie? Yeah. With the douche. Okay. You, you hip? What else don't you know about? <laughs> um, you know what a penis is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Now we're going. What about a rim job? Do you know, know that one? Douche nozzle. <laughs> Get away from the car. Hey, douche nozzle <laughs> off the hood. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, how could I um, get some condom scent? Like, didn't you say... That uh, if you register at drdrew.com, just go on the web. It's dr, D-R-E-W, one word, dot com, and they will, when you register, they will send you condoms. That's a great idea. Free condom. Hey, uh, I'm Katie. do that on our website. You thinking about having sex? No, it's for a friend. Okay, good. You're probably a good uh, 15 years away from that, huh? Probably. <laughs> yeah. What the... Wait, do you just live with your mom alone? No, I have a dad and a brother, too. Ooh, you religious? Um, a little bit. <laughs> okay, all right. I like... My brother's extremely religious. So. Start hanging around with chicks who uh, chew gum and smoke in the girls' room. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what? I got to say, I'm sensing that this girl is is uh, dating a guy or with a guy, not dating, just hanging with him, and she wants to clean herself up. She wants to get the condom. She's getting the whole thing in line. A- no. Am I am I totally wrong? You're or wrong. Would you be honest if that was the truth? She don't have a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend, no. Just There's an older out. guy that's eyeballing her, though. <laughs> out of it. Yeah. All right. I know it. Johnny Douche Nozzle. Oh, hey, right. Douche Nozzle! <laughs> get away from the car! Or douche Hose. <laughs> Douche, douche good. nozzle is uh, better. Yeah, it's the kind of thing you yell. Hey, douche nozzle, break time's <laughs> over. Let's go. <laughs> uh, it's a break, good break, word. Break, 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 break. All right, all right. I'm going to, yeah, I'm gonna write down douche nozzle. <laughs> I want credit to coin it. If you, if you uh, bring that up with jackhole and other fine new English language words, uh, <laughs> douche I want to work that into the that American lexicon. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, take a break. We'll be back after this. Back once again with it. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. We'll be right back before you know it. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Ricky Paul Golden is here from The Young and the Restless. He plays Gary Dawson and... Douche Nozzle! Douche Nozzle! <laughs> Tomorrow uh, night... I play uh, Douche Nozzle on The Young and the Restless. I see a Man Show episode coming here. He's a uh, tough... I just love it. <laughs> streetwise cop who plays by his own rules. <laughs> douche Nozzle, you get in the lieutenant's room. Douche nozzle, I got the mayor and the DA crawling up my ass because of you. He's a douche nozzle with a heart of gold. (laughs) Ben? Yeah. You're 17. Yeah. What's up? I was going out with this girl for uh, six months, Uh and she broke up with me about three months ago, and she still wants to be friends. Yeah. Uh, You guys have been talking about this for a while now, how it's Mm. the guys don't want to be friends afterward. Right. Uh Do you agree? I agree totally. And one time I didn't talk to her for like a week and a half, and she came to me crying, saying she loves me still. She can't live without me. 
and she misses me a lot. Yeah, and friends don't I, do that. Right? I, I mean, it's really a... awkward to be her friend right now. I, right. I've tried telling her that I'm not too comfortable with it, and she just can't really understand that. All right. Uh, to me, when a woman is hell bent on being friends after she's broken up with you, it means she there's still you. some attraction there right. That's right. that you can't deal with, or a little chaos that she needs to interject. That's right. There's drama. Some she, women, drama. some women, and some men don't feel like they're alive unless they're in the middle of something, breaking up, making up, whatever it is. Some sort of drama. So, so they true. break up, then they want to hang out, then they want to be friends, and they you know they break up again. And something happens one night. Right. It's, right. It's all some sort of reenactment. I don't want that drama though. All right. Change then your get number. Out of there. Change your get phone away. number. Get away. Call blocking. Nothing yes. wrong with that. Be strong. Don't be a douche nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> Run. It's too, it's too close to schnoz, schnozola. Yeah, you got to break it up. Douche nozzle. <laughs> Run. Be clear. Are you there, you idiot? All right. Don't make me get out the D word. George, you're 17. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Oh, my God. Two problems? Yeah. Oh. Oh, my God. Drama. All right. So, today, earlier, I was masturbating and... Like, blood came out with the cum, and I was, like, wondering what's up with that. And the tip of my penis really hurts right now. Well, the the blood can be very irritating to the urethra, and it's not that uncommon to have blood with ejaculate. The blood and can it, be irritating, the blood itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? It, it's just rupture. It's not what's supposed to come out of there, and it can irritate. I understand, I, but it, isn't blood sort broken? of benign? I mean, does it have, you know what I mean? Would it sting if it was in your eye? You know, is it it's got a salt it, that, in it? it like I mean, in, in your bowel, it causes terrific irritation and diarrhea. Really? It can. Yeah. A little blood. Yeah. But it's, wow. like, normal? And it can, it's not terribly abnormal. It's a common thing. It needs to be checked out, but it rarely amounts to much. All right. So do get it checked out. And okay? my second problem, or my second thing is, uh, I have to make a speech tomorrow because I'm running for vice president of this club at school. Well, I'm this is a topic that would impress all your peers, no doubt. If like, yeah. no, Adam, if you could like give me some like pointers or like tell me some cool things to say. Some, some jokes, cool Adam. Right, write, yeah. write his speech for him. You open with a joke. Open Jew, Puerto joke. Rican, black guy walk into a bar. <laughs> yeah, a, a nice off color, <laughs> nice off color joke. You know, a, a good Polak joke always loosens up the room. Uh, you're running for vice president of what what club? It's a key club. Now, what do you do in the key club? I, I always hear about the key was. club, but I, I don't know what they do. It's kind of like community service. Like we go around and like help other people. Like, uh -huh. like what does key new for? Funny is... words and things. And uh, why uh, why are you running? <laughs> First off, why are you running for vice president? Why are you run for president? That spot's taken. Then By you, a deuce nozzle. Then you lose, and yeah. you, you get to be vice president. No, it, it doesn't work that way. You run for vice president. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, how many people you running against? Uh, two. And it's like these two chicks. Uh oh. Oh, they're gonna win. Oh. All right. You uh, you call them whores, and you'll get in for sure. <laughs> <laughs> how long? I call them douche nozzle. <laughs> douche nozzle. Yeah, it's spreading across America like cancer. <laughs> uh, you say, uh, listen, these two douche nozzles couldn't help themselves at a buffet. Forget about helping others. I'm your man. I got a strong back. I'm able-bodied. And I love gimps. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't mention the blood. Yeah, don't mention the uh, Thousand Island that's coming out of your penis. <laughs> oh, no, no. All right, hey, George, you, you really should have been working on this speech a while ago. How long does it have to be? It's just like a quick two-minute thing, but like, right. I need to impress everyone. Like, all right, all right, listen, here's what you do. Go up there with a uh, blank piece of paper. Say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, students and um, and uh, co uh, uh, key club members, and then go, uh, and then crumple the paper up and throw it down and go, listen, I, I had a speech prepared, but I, I got to speak it. from the heart. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And see if you can cry. <laughs> Talk about your uncle molesting you. <laughs> 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 All right, George. Uh, You'll be fine. Good luck. You just uh, let your natural uh, personality peek through. I always like, I know I've brought this up before, but it was always the funniest part of the school election. You know, there'd be the pr couple people would run for president, a couple folks, vice president, treasurer. And then there'd be some bizarre uh, thing that no one wanted, some post, you know, right. some uh, student body representative. Lord High or, Chamberlain or something. Yeah, yeah. And no one else would run for it except for one chick. And she'd get up there and she'd go, it was, she got her three minutes to make a speech too. And she'd get up there and she'd go, even though, sorry, 
even though I'm running unopposed, <laughs> I still need your vote. And I always thought, really? How bad do you need it? Couldn't you just vote for yourself and you'd be in? One vote, landslide. <laughs> you know what I mean? How many votes do you need? There's nobody else running. How badly do you need my vote? They always say that. Even though I'm running unopposed, I still need your vote. Why? You don't feel good? They have no friends. Listen, douche nozzle, vote for yourself and let's move on. People who are running unopposed shouldn't get to make speeches. Andrea, wait till I'm in charge. Hi. Andrea, you're 16. What's up? Um, well, my mom, I, ha I was on depressants, antidepressants for a while, and I was on 75 milligrams of Zoloft, and mm. my mom, um, when I ran out, my mom wouldn't take me to get any more, and she's like, oh, well, I don't think you need them, so you're okay. Wow. How do you feel off them? Well, that was probably about two months ago. So I I thought, well, maybe it'll be okay. And one day at school, I was walking down the stairs, and it was like um, two days after I ran out. And I just was so dizzy, I almost fell down the stairs. And I had to, like, reach out to someone that was walking in front of me. Mm -hmm. And he thought that I was like, I don't know what he thought, but it didn't really matter. But anyway, um, I am starting to get depressed again. So I told my mom the other day that she needed to make an appointment for me. And she said, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then, um, like, just yesterday I said, well, Mom, you know, did you make that appointment? And she said, oh, well, no. Yeah. Andrea, why don't you make the appointment for yourself? Yes. You need to start taking care of your health care. Take responsibility for it, taking care of it. Your mom is not helpful here. Can you, uh, is Zoloft a medication you can stop cold turkey or is that bad? Yeah, you could, but there could be a little withdrawal, funny business, a little dizziness or funny feelings. But uh, you, you can stop it rather quickly. All right, so it's sad, but sometimes uh, your parents drop the ball and well, you yeah, got to take is, over. You're 16 now, you you got a relationship with a doctor, that is your business. Your mom's giving you bad advice, she really is not able to sort of admit. She doesn't understand it. Yeah, I remember admit. being 16 and being scared, though. I wouldn't have called the doctor and asked for my own prescription That's at right. 16. But you need to. You need to go in and see, be seen regularly. All right. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, Jay? Jay? Yes? Yeah. Oh, you idiot. I was going to talk to you, but forget it. The radio cranked up. We're uh, plumb out of show here. Jackie? Yes. Your 18 uh, abusive ex-boyfriend keeps calling you? Well, yeah. How to get rid of him? Stop no. answering the phone. Um, what? Get call. Get uh, call block, call, call block, ID. and call, call whatever, and just don't talk to him anymore. You can have have no contact with him. Well, it's not like that, really. Well, good. It's um just the fact that we had an abusive relationship, but then we like we we're just friends. Yeah, this is your fault. Break then. up, then you get idiot. away from him. Get out of it. It's your fault. <laughs> not your fault that he's abusive. It's your fault that it's continuing. And you hang out with the guy. Well, yeah. Well, it's like well, ah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. stay in it. Good, Enjoy. Good luck to you. Enjoy. We'll be back. What the Love line. Love line. We'll be right back. Well, that's it. I want to thank uh, Ricky Paul Golden for coming in here from The Young and the Restless. We, thank uh, you, Adam. Which you and the uh, thank show. Thank you, Dr. Drew. Sir. Much uh, success. I love this show. FlyTV.net. FlyTV.net. Uh, the, ne the network on the net. Punch that up, uh, you kitties that are up uh, late with the computer going. Filter tomorrow night. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Twinkie hole, baby. Woo! <laughs> Well, now. This has been Loveline. The stuff expressed on Loveline is not necessarily the stuff of the staff, management, sponsors, or anyone else, including Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Ingold. Now, please enjoy these birds.